Hi guys, I think I am live now. If you can see me and if you can hear me, if everything is looking good, uh, please do let me know in the chat. Once you message in the chat, uh, then we will start the session. Today's session uh, will be about testnet. These questions will be very useful for students who are preparing for CMAT also. If you want to take part in the test, please go to crackku.in slash live. The last day to apply for testnet has been extended and now it is 10th of February. But I would recommend you to apply for the examination as soon as possible. Don't uh, keep it out to the last date because you never know what might happen on the last day. Your internet might not work, the website might crash. There are many uncertainties that are involved. So if you are planning to take testnet, definitely apply as soon as possible. The next thing I would want to tell you is that we are having 5 mocks for testnet. for just rupees 299 and all of them are in the latest pattern. The link to enroll to them is given in the description of this video. Definitely do check them out. We have also uploaded many GK videos for Tisnet. So definitely do subscribe to our channel and you can search our channel to get the important GK videos. They will be very useful for you not just for Tisnet but even for CMAT. Having said that, let us start the session today. So please go to crackoo.in slash live. Once you go to crackoo.in slash live, we will start the test very very shortly. If you are having any doubts about how to prepare for this examination or for CMAT or for any other MBA examination, feel free to let us know in the chat. And please do like this stream. If you want to take part in the test, please go to crackoo.in slash live. The first question will be up in the next 2 minutes. Here is the first question. You have uh, around 1 and a half minutes to answer this. This is a question which is based on simple uh, theory of quadratic equations. We have close to 30 people who are watching this stream live. Please do like the stream guys. If you like it, then we can do these kind of streams more often. Let us answer this question. We are told that P and Q are the roots of this equation. Ax square plus Bx plus C is equal to 0. And we are asked to find out the equation whose roots are P by Q and Q by P. The equation who root, whose roots are P by Q and Q by P will be of the form x minus P by Q into x minus Q by P is equal to 0. This will be of the form x square minus p by q plus q by p into x plus 1 is equal to 0. So what we are essentially required to calculate is the value of p by q plus q by p. If you are simplifying this, this is equal to p square plus q square by p into q. How can we actually calculate that? Because we are told that p and q are the roots of the quadratic equation ax square plus bx plus c is equal to 0, p plus q will be equal to the sum of the roots which is minus b by a and p into q which is the product of the roots will be equal to c by a. 
when we know p plus q we can calculate the value of p plus q whole square so p square plus q square plus 2pq will be equal to b square by a square 2pq will be equal to 2c by a so the value of p square plus q square will be equal to b square by a square minus 2c by a which is equal to b square minus 2ac by a square now this given equation will be of the form x square minus b square minus 2ac by a square into x plus 1 is equal to 0. But this is the value of p square plus q square what we require to calculate is the value of p square plus q square divided by pq. So p square plus q square divided by pq will be equal to b square minus 2ac by a square whole divided by c by a or this will be equal to b square minus 2ac divided by a into c. So the given equation will be of the form x square minus b square minus 2ac divided by ac plus 1 is equal to 0 or you can multiply the entire equation with ac. So this becomes equal to ac into x square minus b square minus 2ac into x plus ac is equal to 0. So the correct answer is option a. Let us now look at the next question. If you are looking to take this test, please go to crackwood.in slash live and you can join the test there. These are all very important questions for TISNET as well as for CMAT. So if you are planning to take any one of the two examinations, definitely join this test here. In this question we are given an equation we are told that log of p square by q square plus log of q square by p square is equal to log of p plus q. We are asked to calculate the value of p plus q. If you are looking at the equation the left hand side says log of p square by q square plus log of q square by p square is equal to log of p plus q. This left hand side can be simplified this is going to equal log of p square by q square into q square by p square is equal to log of p plus q. This is equal to 1. Now if you are cancelling logarithm on both sides, it would imply that the value of p plus q has to equal 1. So the correct answer is option b. Let us now look at the next question. Akash Yadav Krishna is saying, sir, mere teen mock mein 40 score are rahe hai, bar bar consistent. Uh, I think that is a good start. Try to increase it slightly further. Also try to figure out ki kaun se section mein marks achhe nahi aare and focus on that particular section. Especially in GK, I think there is a lot of scope for you to improve a lot in just uh, the remaining 20-25 days. Uh, we do have the previous papers for TISNET. The link to download them is given in the chat. All the previous papers for TISNET which will be very useful for you in your preparation. You 
you can download them you can download the pdfs of those testnet papers also and they will be very useful for you in addition to that we are giving five mocks for testnet all of them are in the latest pattern for just rupees 299 you should definitely check it out the link to enroll to this five mocks for test for just rupees 299 is given in the description of this video In this question, we are told that there is a group of 7 engineers and 5 doctors. So, there are 7 engineers and 5 doctors. From this, we need to select 8 persons. And these 8 people should be selected in such a way that there are at least 4 engineers. So, the first case is that there are 4 engineers and 4 doctors. The second case is that there are 5 engineers and 3 doctors because you want the total number of people who are selected to be equal to 8. The next case is that there are 6 engineers and 2 doctors and the last case is that there are 7 engineers and just 1 doctor. From 7 engineers, the number of ways of selecting 4 engineers is 7C4. And from 5 doctors, the number of ways of selecting 4 doctors is 5C4. In the second case, it will be 7C5 into 5C3. The third case will be 7C6 into 5C2 and the last case will be 7C7 into 5C1. The value of 7C4 will be equal to 35 into 5C4 is 5. The second case is 7C5 which is equal to 21 into 5C3 which is equal to 10. The next case is 7C6 which is 7 into 5C2 which is 10. And the last case is 7C7 which is 1 into 5C1 which is 5. This is 5, this is 70, this is 210 and this is 175. So, the total number of ways in which this selection can be done is 175 plus 210 which is 385, 385 plus 70 is 455 plus 5 is 460. So, the correct answer is option C. Let us look at the next question. Infobuzz and Megrock are asking what is the best way to study GK. One of the things that you can definitely do is watch the videos that we have uploaded on GK on our YouTube channel. Definitely do check out the Kraku GK videos which are uploaded on this particular YouTube channel. Every single day we are uploading at least 20 to 25 GK questions and we have been doing that for the last few days. So, if you watch them carefully and understand them. And remember these answers, they will be very useful for you on the day of the examination. Uh, we have around uh, 50 people who are watching this stream live. Guys, please do like the stream. In this question, we are told that the ratio of the money with A and B is 3.1 is to 5.2. So, the ratio of money with A and B, if you simplify, is equal to 31 is to 52. The ratio of the money with B and C is 10.4 is to 12. So, if you are removing the decimals, it is 104 is to 120. And the ratio of the money with C and D is 36 is to 1.9. So, if you simplify that, this is equal to 360 is to 19. We are told that D has 3800 rupees with him and we are required to calculate how much money A has. If D has 3800, the amount of money with C will be 3800 into 360 divided by 19. This is 200. So, the amount of money with C is 72,000. Therefore, the amount of money with B will be 72,000 into 104 
divided by 120. This is you can cancel this and this is 600. This is actually 60. 1, 12. So, this is 600. So, the amount of money with B is equal to 600 into 104. Therefore, the amount of money with A because the ratio of the money with A and B is 31 is to 52 is equal to 31 divided by 52 into 600 into 104. 104 divided by 52 is 2. So, this is equal to 31 into 1200. 31 into 12 is equal to 372. And then you multiply it with 100. So, the correct answer is 37,200 which is option A. Let us look at the next question. This is a very simple question. I hope many people get this correct. In this question, we are given a circle and we are told that AB is a chord of the circle. We are told that angle ACB is 60 degrees. So, this is equal to 60 degrees and we are asked to calculate the value of angle ADB. In any circle, the angle subtended by a chord at any point on the circumference is the same. So, if there is a chord of this form, the angle subtended by this chord at this point on the circumference will be the same as it subtends on any other point. So, basically this angle if this is equal to A will be equal to A over here and even if you are looking at it at any other point on the circumference this also will be equal to A. In the same way if angle ACB is equal to 60 degrees angle ADB will also be equal to 60 degrees because the chord is the same the chord is AB. So, the correct answer for this question is option C. Let us look at the next question.
In this question, we are told that there are two varieties of rice. One of them costs rupees 25 and the other costs rupees 40. So, we have a rice which costs rupees 25 and another rice which costs rupees 40. Both of them are mixed in certain ratio such that the final mixture, the cost price is 30.05. And we are required to calculate the ratio in which both of these varieties of rice are mixed. The simplest way to solve this is by using the theory of allegations. In this case, what is the difference between 30.5 and 25? 30.5 minus 25 is 5.5. And what is the difference between 40 and 30.5? That will be 9.5. Now, we have to interchange them. So, we put 9.5 over here and 5.5 over here. So, the ratio in which the two varieties of rice are mixed is 9.5 is to 5.5. That is 95 is to 55 which is equal to 19 is to 11. So, the correct answer is option D. Let us now look at the next question. We have close to 46 likes guys, please uh, like the stream, I want to get to 50 likes as soon as possible. <clears throat> and if you are looking for very good mocks for testnet, we have 5 mocks for just rupees 299, you should definitely do check it out. All of these mocks are in the latest pattern, so they will be very beneficial for you. In this question, we are told that the perimeter of a triangle is increased by 10% with all the sides increasing proportionately. So, if say the right hand side diagram is that of the triangle initially, all the sides are increased by 10%. So, the perimeter also increases by 10%. So, if the base initially was B, the base now is 1.1B. As all the sides are increased proportionally, if the height initially is say H, the height now will be equal to 1.1 H. So, the area initially was half into B into H. The area after the increase is half into 1.1 B into 1.1 1 H or this is equal to half into 1.21 into B H. The area initially is half B H, now it is half into 1.21 B H. This implies that the percentage increase is 21 percent. So, the correct answer is option C. Let us now look at the next question.
In this question, we are told that there is a bike which is going from point P towards the lighthouse at a uniform speed in a straight line. The top of the lighthouse was initially observed from P at 30 degrees. After that, uh, it moves for 50 minutes and then the elevation of the tower increases by 15 degrees. So, this becomes 45 degrees. It continues to move and then the elevation increases by another 15 degrees. So, this becomes equal to 60 degrees. We are required to calculate after how much time does this elevation increase from 45 degrees to 60 degrees. If we assume that the length of RQ is say height H of the lighthouse, what is the length of PQ? RQ divided by PQ is equal to tan 30 degrees. If you assume that RQ is equal to H, the value of PQ will be equal to RQ divided by tan 30 degrees. Tan 30 degrees is 1 by root 3. So, this becomes equal to H divided by 1 by root 3. So, this becomes equal to H root 3. So, the length PQ is equal to H root 3. As angle RSQ is 45 degrees, RQS is a right angled isosceles triangle. Therefore, the length of QS will be equal to the length of RQ which is equal to H. So, this is equal to H. What is the length of QT? RQ divided by QT is equal to tan 60 degrees which is equal to root 3. So, the length of QT is equal to H divided by root 3. This over here is equal to H divided by root 3. In 50 minutes, the distance travelled is equal to PS which is equal to H root 3 minus H. Or this is H into root 3 minus 1. What is the distance from TS? The distance TS is equal to H minus H by root 3, which is equal to H by root 3 into root 3 minus 1. If it is taking 50 minutes to travel H into root 3 minus 1, it is going to take 50 divided by root 3 to travel h into root 3 minus 1 whole divided by root 3. So, the required answer is 50 divided by root 3 which is approximately equal to 28.8 minutes. The closest option is 29 minutes which is option A. Let us now look at the next question. Ichani Puta Tunda is asking, does this live stay for longer or does it disappear after the live gets over? It will stay for some time. It will be there on the channel. You can watch the previous lives that we have done also. In this question, we are told that a particular mobile phone was sold to a customer at 5% loss. Let us assume that the cost price of the mobile is say equal to C. So, the selling price is equal to 0.95 C. But we are told that if we had sold it for 90 rupees more, so that is if the selling price was 0.95 C plus 90, then the shopkeeper would have made a profit of 1%. That is then the selling price would have been 1.01 .01 C. Using this equation, we can calculate the value of C. 
because then 90 is equal to 1.01c minus 0.95c which is equal to 0.06c or the value of c is equal to 90 divided by 0.06 which is equal to 1500. So, the answer for this question is option D which is 1500. Let us look at the next question. We have close to 45 people who are watching this stream live. Guys, please do like the stream. If you are looking for good mocks for TIS, please do enroll to our Kraku TISnet mocks. We have 5 mocks for just Rs. 299 and all of them are in the latest pattern. In this question, we are told that the LCM of 2 numbers is 84 and these numbers are in the ratio of 3 is to 4. So, let us assume that the two numbers are 3x and 4x. What is the LCM of these numbers? The LCM of these numbers will be 3 into 4 into x which is equal to 12x. This would imply that 12x is equal to 84 or the value of x is equal to 7. So, the two numbers are 21 which is 3 into 7 and 28 which is 4 into 7. So, the sum of the two numbers is 21 plus 28 which is equal to 49. Let us now look at the next question. In this question, we are told that there are two people A and B, they borrow different amounts at the same time at the same compound interest of 5 percent. Let us assume that the amount borrowed by A is PA and the amount borrowed by B is equal to PB. The rate of interest is the same for both of them, it is 5 percent. A pays back after 5 years and B pays back after 4 years. So, what is the amount paid by A? That is PA which is his principal into 1 plus 5 percent whole to the power 5. This we are told is the same as the amount repaid by B. So, this is equal to PB into 1 plus 5 percent whole to the power 4. 
we can cancel 1 plus 5 percent that is 1.05 to the power 4 on both sides. So, this would imply that P A into 1 plus 5 percent is equal to P B or the ratio of P A divided by P B is equal to 1 divided by 1 plus 5 percent which is 1.05. This is equal to 100 divided by 105. This is equal to 20 divided by 21. So, the required ratio is 20 is to 21 which is option C. Let us now look at the next question. In this question, we are told that there are three unbiased coins which are uh, tossed. What is the probability of getting at most two tails? When three coins are tossed, you either get zero tails and then three heads or you get one tail and two heads or you get two tails and one head or you get all three of them to be tails and there are no heads. We are asked to find out the probability that it is one of the first three cases and it is not the fourth case. If three coins are tossed, what is the probability of the fourth case actually occurring? That is all three of them being uh, tails. That will be half into half into half, which is equal to 1 by 8. So, 1 by 8 of the times, all the three coins will be tails. And in the remaining 7 by 8 times, you will have at most two tails. So, the correct answer is 7 by 8, which is option B. Let us look at the next question. In this question, we are asked to calculate the last digit of 1733 whole to the power 307. Or essentially, the important thing is to calculate the last digit of 3 to the power 307. When you are calculating the last digit of any number, you should remember that there will be a cyclicity involved. 3 to the power 1, the last digit is 3. 
for 3 square the last digit is 9 for 3 cube which is equal to 27 the last digit is 7 for 3 to the power 4 which is equal to 81 the last digit is 1 for 3 to the power 5 which is equal to 243 the last digit is 3 and again this cycle is repeating so whenever you are having a power of n because the cyclicity is repeating after 4 times once you calculate the remainder when n is divided by 4 we can easily calculate the last digit of 3 to the power n if the remainder is 1 then la then the last digit will be 3 if the remainder is 2 then the last digit will be 9 if the remainder is 3 the last digit will be 7 and if the remainder is 4 the last digit or basically if it is a multiple of 4 and the remainder is equal to 0 the last digit will be 1 in this particular case we are required to calculate the last digit when the power of uh, 3 is 307. 307 is equal to 304 plus 3. 304 is a multiple of 4 that is 76 into 4. So, the remainder when 307 is divided by 4 is equal to 3. So, the last digit of 3 to the power 307 will be the same as the last digit of 3 cube which will be equal to 7. So, the correct answer in this particular case is option A. Let us now look at the next question. In this question, we are told that there are two numbers which are in the ratio 7 is to 9 and their sum is equal to 112. So, let us assume that the two numbers are 7x and 9x. So, what is the sum of these two numbers? The sum is 7x plus 9x which is equal to 16x. So, 16x is equal to 112. But the value of x is equal to 112 divided by 16 which is equal to 7. So, the two numbers will be 7 into 7 which is 49 and 9 into 7 which is 63. So, the larger number is 63 which is option D. Let us now look at the next question.
In this question, we are told that the area of a triangle metal plate with base 88 centimeters and altitude 64 centimeters, this area was reduced to one fourth by making a hole of a circular shape in it. What is the radius of the hole will be? So, suppose this is the triangle. The area of the triangle can be easily found out because the base is 88 and the altitude is 64. So, the area of this triangle is half into base into height which is half into 88 into 64. From this a circular portion was removed as a whole and what is the area of the circular portion? After this was removed the area of the triangle which was remaining becomes one fourth of this. So, the area of the circle has to be three fourths the area of the original triangle. Because once you remove 3 fourth, only then will 1 fourth be actually uh, remain. So, half into 88 into 64 into 3 by 4 is the area of the circle which was removed. This will be equal to pi r square. That is pi into r square. Where r is the radius of this circle. We can simplify this. This will be equal to 8. So, pi is 22 by 7 into r square is equal to 88 into 8 into 3. 22 you can cancel from both sides this is 4. So, the value of r square is equal to 4 into 4 into 42 because 3 into 7 is 21 and you want to take the square root. So, the value of r is equal to 4 into square root of 42 centimeters. So, the correct answer is option D. Let us now look at the next question. We have close to 40 people who are watching this stream live. Guys, please do like this stream. And if you are looking for a good uh, mock package for Tisnet, definitely do subscribe to the 5 Tisnet mocks. The link to enroll to them is given in the description of this video. In this question, we are told that a boat covers 24 kilometers upstream and 72 kilometers downstream in 8 hours, while it covers 48 kilometers upstream and 108 kilometers downstream in 14 hours. Let us assume that the speed of the boat when it is downstream, when it is going downstream is equal to d, and the speed when it is going upstream is equal to u. The speed of a boat when it is going downstream is basically equal to the speed of the boat plus speed of the water and speed of the boat when it is going upstream is equal to the speed of the boat minus speed of the water or in this case the speed of the boat in still water and the speed of the stream. We will calculate this later. Let us first calculate the value of d and u. The first information that is given to us is that the boat covers 24 kilometers upstream that is 24 divided by u and 72 kilometers downstream, so that is 72 divided by d, this has to equal 8. Similarly, 48 kilometers upstream, so 48 divided by u plus 108 kilometers downstream, so 108 divided by d has to equal 14. Using these two equations, we can easily calculate the value of u and d. For example, let us multiply the first equation with 2. So, this becomes equal to 48 divided by u plus 144 divided by d is equal to 16. Now, if you subtract the first equation, this equation from the last equation, we are going to get that 36 divided by d is equal to 2 or the value of d is equal to 18. That is the speed of the boat, uh, speed of the boat downstream is 18 kilometers per hour. What is the speed of the boat upstream? We can substitute it in the first equation, 72 divided by d will be equal to 72 divided by 18 which is equal to 4. 
So 24 divided by u will equal 4 or the value of u is equal to 6. And the speed of the boat upstream is equal to 6 kilometers per hour. But what we are required to calculate is not the speed of the boat uh, downstream and upstream, but the speed of the boat in still water and the speed of the stream. If you assume that the speed of the boat in still water is b, the speed of the boat downstream is b plus w. So b plus w is equal to 18 and the speed of the boat upstream will be b minus w and b minus w will be equal to 6. Using these two equations we can calculate that the value of b is 12 kilometers per hour and the value of w is equal to 6 kilometers per hour. Let us look at the next question. In this question, we are given a circle. We are told that PQ is the diameter of the circle. We are given angle PQS. This is equal to 35 degrees. We are required to calculate the value of angle QRS. The first thing to do is connect P and R. The reason to connect this is because if you are looking at the chord PS, the angle subtended by the chord PS will be the same at any point on the circumference. So in this particular case, if it is subtending 35 degrees at Q, it will also subtend 35 degrees at R. So this will be equal to 35 degrees. Another thing to notice is that in any circle, if you have a diameter, the angle subtended by the diameter at any point on the circumference is equal to 90 degrees. So if you are drawing a line which is connecting both the vertices, both the ends of the diameter to any point on the circumference, this has to equal 90 degrees. This would imply that angle PRQ is equal to 90 degrees. But we know that angle PRS is equal to 35 degrees because PRS has to equal PQS. This would imply that the this would imply that the remaining angle over here, that is angle QRS, has to equal 90 degrees minus 35 degrees, which is equal to 55 degrees. So the first thing we did is connect P and R. We realize that angle PRS is 35 degrees which is the same as PQS. We also note that because PQ is the diameter, PRQ has to equal 90 degrees. This would imply that the only remaining angle which is QRS has to be the difference of 90 and 35 which is equal to 55 degrees. So the correct answer over here is option A which is 55 degrees. Let us look at the last question for today.
In this question, we are told that x square minus 3x plus 2 is a factor of x to the power 4 minus px square plus q. If you are factorizing x square minus 3x plus 2, this is equal to x minus 1 into x minus 2. If x square minus 3x plus 2 is a factor of x to the power 4 minus p x square plus q, it would imply that x minus 1 is also a factor of the given polynomial and x minus 2 is also a factor. So, if you substitute the value of x to be equal to 1 and the value of x to be equal to 2 in the given polynomial, it has to equal 0. Because x minus 1 is a factor of this polynomial and if you substitute the value of x to be 1, you are getting 1 to the power 4 which is 1 minus p plus q, this has to equal 0. And because x minus 2 is a factor of the given polynomial, let us substitute the value of x to be equal to 2 in the polynomial, it also has to equal 0. So, this is 2 to the power 4 minus p into 2 square plus q, this also has to equal 0. 2 to the power 4 is 16 minus 4p plus q has to equal 0. Now, we have two equations. This is the first equation, this is the second equation and there are two unknowns. So, we can easily calculate the value of p and q. If you subtract the first equation from the second equation, we are going to get that 3p is equal to 15 or the value of p is equal to 5. If the value of p is equal to 5, the value of q has to equal 4. So, the value of p comma q is 5 comma 4 which is option B. Thanks for tuning in. If you like this stream, please do like and if you are having any issues uh, with any of the questions or with respect to testnet preparation in general, please feel free to post your comment below the video. And if you are looking for a good place to purchase 5 mocks for testnet, all of them in the latest pattern, you should definitely check out the Kraku testnet mocks. You can get 5 latest pattern mocks for just Rs. 299.